Good evening, all. I wrap Steen of Glinder & Associates with your financial market wrap-up for this Wednesday, the 16th of June, 2021. The time about 5.35 now. So we got the Fed announcement. Now, I, I did a quick write-up for my clients, my paid subscribers. It looks like this with more commentary from me about what went on. Suffice to say, the, cat, the Fed did keep its rates as they were. They raised the repo rate a little bit, the excess reserve uh, ratio, if you will, up uh, five basis points, not much, very much there. The dot plot is what moved to seven members from four for a move in 2022. And if you took a look, the key wording was the Fed began talking about, talking about when they should talk about raising interest rates. It's very confusing. It's the Fed way of saying they don't have their eyes shut. They see what's going on, but they're data dependent. They don't know if employment's gonna hold. They have their ideas that it'll be stronger. The Fed chair said in one to two years, one to two years, that he expects the U.S. economy to be back to full employment. He still believes that inflation is transitory. He used lumber as one of the examples. He could have used copper. Copper's back down 11 more cents. And China did confirm that they are going to sell excess stock reserves. You don't even have to call them excess, just uh, reserves that they have of copper, aluminum, and I believe it's gonna be zinc into the marketplace uh, to the, not to the speculators, but to the manufacturers that need it. They didn't tell us how they're doing it. They didn't tell us when they're doing it or how much is going to happen at each auction, but they are going to do that. The rest of this talks about the transitory factors, the goal the Fed has of 2% and so on. So you got a little bit of both elements in this, and that was the reason you have to be careful. Now, we knew this was going to be an important Fed report. Let me tell you what I bring to the table to my subscribers. I tell them to stay away and go to a cash position. Now you're going to say, oh, look at I could have picked up blah, blah, blah. Well, you could have lost that. What if you were long gold and it's down $45 right now? You want to jump out a window, okay? No. Why are you putting yourself in that position? Commodity trading is difficult enough. You don't do that. Now you're going to be in store for what I call, quote unquote, the yin yang impact. When our Fed comes out at 1 o'clock with a statement, and then at 1.30 the Fed chair starts talking, finishes up typically at 2.20 in the afternoon. Watch the time. You'll see that I'm, I'm very close. These are Chicago times that I'm giving you. What time is it in Asia? People sleep. So they're waking up. They see our markets. They start reacting, and our markets start reacting to their reaction. That's the beginning of the yin. The yang comes in because as the morning wears on there and the Europeans start waking, think about the time, by the time our Fed was uh, through talking, it was in parts of Europe already 7.30 at night, 8.30, the traders aren't sitting at their screens typically, and what goes on from that? Now, they'll catch up after Asia. So you go around, things get worse initially. Oh, this is terrible. And then Asia starts, oh, well, maybe it's not so bad. And then Europe has to come in. And by the time it comes back to the U.S. in the morning, you could have a different game. You could have a game that gets a rally. You could, anything can happen. That's the yin-yang impact. I try to avoid that. Why? It's called Swiss cheese holes through my whole body. I have done and have the privilege of probably having done everything that you should do wrong in a 52 year period in terms of a trade, period, okay? And if people don't come out and tell you those things, you think great traders are born or made. I didn't say I'm a great trader. The great ones I know, they go through a process of losing to winning. That's it seems to be universal with them. Don't stand in front of a train wreck. You don't have to be there. You come in when the pieces fall, and then you start picking up the scraps. Think of that. So when we look at the S&P, did anything really change on all this? Well, for the week you're down, and you're already open tonight. We're in Thursday trade, not even down a percentage point. 0.74%, okay. Then I come to the daily bar chart, and we said this market X today, 
it was coming up, but I said, you know, you got to be careful here. The volatility has come out of the market in quite a way. I see we've made new highs. I know the May sell may go away play was long gone. I pointed that out. I don't hear anybody else on TV doing that. And the market's getting its first correction. Okay. When we take a look at the swing line, you're not trending. You have a higher high and now a lower low. So you've broken that level of the trade. Where did you go back to? I want you to look at this 18-day average of closes. Magically, the market on that rally pulled all the way back and it seems to be stalling out. So typical of what goes on. It's now got to figure out what to do next. That's the exact number I think it should go to. Where did the rally stop? Did you take my enhanced Bollinger Band course yet? This is worth everything. First time it hit the Bollinger Band. What are you supposed to do? I'm not going to keep saying. Here you are. And where did the momentum go? You lost the embedded reading. And here's where the market hit that Bollinger Band. And here's where you lose the reading. And here's your follow through. So now what you've got is a market that has lost its bullishness. It has stayed in what? The psychiatry trade that I call this. When you get caught in these Bollinger Bands, you whipsaw back and forth. That's the function of the market. Now to spin the people out because you have a change. You're not as bullish and momentum, which often leads price, was lost. When we come to the NASDAQ, I don't know. I see the first challenge of the Bollinger Band having been a great spot to been out of the market. You don't have to agree. I think so. And guess what else? If we take a look, the market kept the embedded reading just by a hair. It's losing it by four points, but it's early in the session. This could rescue itself and stay embedded, which would still be a bullish factor. If it gives it up, all I'm looking for is a challenge of the 18-day average. And from there, I think the game begins. Let's go to the Dow. The Dow went and it didn't quite hit the upper band. It certainly hit the lower band today and in the process got oversold and it's even more oversold and not close to embedding. If you were sitting next to me and you were short, and I'm not saying you should have been short, I take my elbow and give it to you like that. Why? Duh, you hit the lower Bollinger Band. Why are you hanging around for the short? You think there's more gravy here? There might be. It isn't worth the risk is what I'd be telling you. The Russell. In the Russell, you started fading yesterday, yesterday, Tuesday. Today, the market was in trouble from the whole day. And by the end of the day, it had lost its embedded reading. And tonight, it's even worse with the loss. OK, where do I think the market's headed? The 18-day average of closes. And from there, the regrouping begins. So I, I want to say that that's what I think we're doing. We're regrouping in this market. Well, if those markets went down, what did the VIX do? Here was yesterday's action up to that. So you got a higher high, a lower low pattern. You had been oversold. I think you're going to stay stuck in those Bollinger Bands for a little bit. This could be where those summer blues set in a little bit in some of these markets. Because if you got overly bullish, this took the air out of it. It doesn't mean you're bearish. Got the difference? And we'll see if the VIX proves me right on that thought process. Then we get up to the 30-year bonds. I thought right here, you heard me say it to you over and over, the combination of the 100-day and the Bollinger Bear and the first challenge should have been it. And I said, I, I know it's gone further, but I have my doubts. Well, it's all the way back now to where I thought it was going, the 18-day average and the 100, as it turns out. Have you broken the uptrend? No. The market's got higher lows, higher highs. It's in a key support area. It has momentum working against it, and the momentum is already out of overbought condition. Am I screaming a buy here? No. If one bought there, they got to put a stop all the way here. If you put a money risk on it, it's too big. As a chartist, that is a support area. In the 10-year note, a whole different world. In the 10-year note, this is how you looked coming in. You had higher lows, higher highs. I put this up here now because with today's action, you slice through everything. But where did the market run out of its steam? Again, if you take my charting course, I teach. Right here is where this market, and I'll go to it. 
That is where I thought the market would have the key resistance. And I said to you, you're overbought. I think the pros are coming out of this market. And as it turns out, it went higher. And I'm sure you thought I was an idiot. And a lot of people still do. And you're trying to catch it. No, I think it's still, you're going into a key report day. Why play that game? I don't know what to say. If you could have got out better, God bless you, of course. But that looked to me like a pretty good resistance point, and in retrospect, was a smart place to take some money off the table. Now, I think the dollar's vulnerable on this ch first challenge over the upper Bollinger Band by this much and up to the 100-day average of closes. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. It is not open yet, so we'll see what happens. I do question that. The euro's getting hit first oversold, went through the, again, key support I thought at first would be these numbers, uh, and here's where you're at. Uh, I don't have the 200-day average on the chart, or it's not even plotting. I don't think there's 200 days here to plot. Futures markets don't get that much trading in the far backs. It's hard to plot a 200-day average of the futures contract. I can do cash all day long, but it's not the same as the, as the contract itself because they differentiate the they're not always together. In the British pound, let's assume the pound wants to fall more. I don't expect much more than the 139.38 level. Again, it's two days in a row now under the lower Bollinger Band. If it stays like this, back here, did it stay under it? Not at all. So day one, maybe it'll be day two. You're widening out this this pattern. That's what happened. So when you get into these and you hear me say, here's your psychiatry pattern, where you're playing from the tops to the bottoms, you don't know which way it's going to break out. That's not a breakout. Not a breakout. You didn't close under the band. First day where it could be a downside breakout, you need two days in a row with lower lows and lower close and close in the bottom quad quadrant. I don't know if it'll qualify or not. It certainly looks like we have a trade top in place, but I'm not expecting much beyond this 100-day average at this point on the chart due to the oversold condition. Bitcoin, what do you do the very first time you hit a Bollinger Band if you're going up? The way I'm going to tell you, I think you take off your money. You can keep half a position if you're embedded. If you're not embedded, I don't believe that. Boom. You hit it, so now the pullback to 37,544, that should be interesting, but you're overbought and you're not trying to lock in this uptrend. This to me looks like more of a short covering event than it does of new buying in the start of something new. I wish I could tell you it's different, but I'm not quite seeing that. Then we get to the Brent WTI oil, and I watched it gain again today, and I, I went, I, I was actually kill, kicking myself, going, boy, I wish I had hold, held on. And then I saw the stock market fall apart, and I had traders that were long this and long the stock market, and I just made a decision not to stay on that train track. I didn't want to play the game. So it's a day later, and the market's finally breaking. If it loses the embedded reading, I think it'll get back into this 7135 area. Certainly the trend is still up. Nothing here looks like it's been derailed at this point unless you lose the embedded readings. But even if you lose them, I'm only looking for the 18-day average. I am not looking for a big bear break in these markets, not in the energy complex. I think fundamentally it looks very solid still for all the reasons that I gave you before. I think that Europe, the US, Asia, they're coming alive. It was interesting to see the uh, Chinese economic data. Again, I wrote about that in my morning subscriber report. And I gave all the reasons as to how it is slowed down, but it's still growth. It's the growth that is slowing down. That's all that's going on. They're not all of a sudden leaning over there by any means. And that's what's going to happen in the U.S. You get that surge of growth, then it gives ground and you pull back. Doesn't mean the growth is over. Gasoline, since the market peaked out up here, and I told traders, because we, I, I was in that, and I went, I don't like this trade, and we were lucky. I think really fortunate to scratch the trade. Uh, the market has just been giving ground all the way through. So you put it all together. Remember the yin-yang impact. That's going to be very crucial. If you want to see and try what I send to my paid subscribers, 
and I have a lot of paid subscribers. I'm talking the full subscription, not just the written, not just rather the morning subscriber videos. These are my twice daily written updates as well and other reports I put out. How do you get it? I want to give it to you for free. I certainly want you to become one of my subscribers, but let me put this in your hand. And with these markets, why not take a look at all that I'm doing? You'll get the morning uh, futures. You're going to get my daily numbers for the window envelopes, which is the standard deviation from that 18-day average for your chartist, and I think you'll like what I do with that. My number package looks just like this on the website that the subscribers get into. I'll help you identify the trading ranges, the trends, and believe me, if you know anything about me, if I'm not bashful, <laughs> I'm going to say to you, I want you to buy, and I want you to buy at the market, or I want you to buy at this price. Here's the stop. Boy, was I ever wrong. Boy, was I ever right on that. But you're going to get 52 years of experience. You think you're getting that from the kids you're talking to on the phone? I doubt it. How do you get it? Go to our website under free offers. Make a phone call. My staff will work with you and get it all set up. I'm Ira. Should be a lot of fun tomorrow. I'll see you then.